Hello everyone, welcome back to Alchemy with Zero Phase. I'm Eric, and this is the second video in the In Paint to Erase Things video series. <laughs> Actually, this is going to be a little more advanced. Um, I'm going to show you how to use InPaint anything to do a couple different things, a few different things. Okay, it is an extension that you'll need to install. Okay, it's pretty easy. Uh, I do believe it is offered uh, in the available repository. If not, it is uh, the link to the uh, GitHub location is right here. Okay, just do a search for InPaint anything. Okay, I'll leave the link for it in the description as well. Okay, when you get it installed, you'll get a tab over the top that says InPaint anything. Now, when you first use this, it will have to download a few models. These are small models. This shouldn't take too long to download. Um, they've added a few since the first video I did on this. I'm not familiar with all these. We're just going to be sticking with the first one here unless I see a need to change. Okay. Um, and at this point, you're just going to be adding an image in. Oh, look. There's our cute little puppy we were working with before. Okay. So if you remember in our previous video, I was showing you how to use the in-painting method couple of different methods to erase various objects in the image. Okay, these small little toys, this thing up here. So with the InPaint Anything, this is actually going to accelerate what you do as long as you know how to use it to either erase things or even change things. Okay, so once you import the image, you've got your models installed, uh, you're just going to click the Run Segment Anything. What this is going to do is run it through a uh, small AI that's going to identify all the separate objects in the image and it's going to assign a color to each of those objects as you can see okay it's using a wide range of uh, shades and other things to identify any identifiably separate object okay um, different models this is kind of where this comes in so these different models will segment differently like if I come down here fast Sam We'll select that. You can kind of see how this one's set up. Oh, that one came up the same. Let's see if we can see it. I know some of these are a little different. Give this one a second. Yeah, see, it's it's doing this the identification a little bit differently. But again, like I said, I'm just sticking with the first one. I'm going to show you how this works. I remember when I first started using InPaint Anything, I got a little confused about how to... Uh, mask things out the things that I wanted to change uh, it got a little confusing for me because I was like okay I got this little dot right here that I'm moving around you know and I can increase it but am I supposed to like mask out an entire thing you know that I want to get rid of like that and no you don't um, they made this ridiculously simple uh, let's shrink this back down so we got a little dot and all you have to do is is just tag the things that you want to modify okay that's why it's masked out and put this black line kind of around everything is to help isolate each of these different objects that you want to manipulate if your mass is still a little too big shrink it down a little bit and just put a little dot in that one object okay so we've got all of our these little toys on the floor marked that we want to get rid of okay now the next step is you click create mask Okay. By default, this box here is checks as ignore black area. I don't know if I want to go into how, how, I, how to describe this. It's basically you've got a black panel behind this, and it's creating a colored shape to uh, mask out each of these objects or even the, the characteristics of an object. Okay, so And there were some issues in the first versions of InPaint Anything where if you, you uh, masked a black area, it created this mask that outlined everything. It was really annoying. So they integrated this so it ignores those black areas. Okay. So now we're going to create mask. We click create mask. And what it does is it comes down here. And, oh, you know, I'm going to redo this because that was from the previous time I was doing this. So we're going to hit create mask. And as you can see, it creates these. It kind of makes everything dark. And then it highlights these objects. Okay exactly where the mask was up here you just you're just tagging it saying hey i want this area this area and this area whatever to be masked so it does that now as we move forward you're going to run into some issues and i'm going to show you real quick what i mean by this uh when you let's say we want to get rid of these objects oh great we've got a mask so uh let's come up here to cleaner 
And this is the one that will erase objects and they have different models or different techniques on this too, but we're gonna stick with Llama. Run cleaner, okay? We're gonna run that and see what it comes up with and it doesn't do a very good job. You can see it kind of mangled it a little bit. So the reason for this is just like what I talked about in my previous video when it comes to giving the AI context of what you want to do. And so what they've done is they've, they used to just have only the button, expand mask region, okay? And you'd have to click that. And what it does, it expands this little mask region. You have to click it again and click it again to get it to incorporate enough area to give the AI context of what it is around that object. But now they've incre included a slider bar. You can slide up. Let's say we want to add, I'm guessing this is like 10 iterations. So we're going to expand that so it would do it like 10 times. See, now we got these nice big masked areas around those objects. And those seem big enough. We can try that and see. Let's go ahead and hit Run Cleaner. And it's going to go ahead and erase those objects. Now, that didn't do too bad of a job. You can see a little bit of weirdness going on in there. And again, that's because the mast areas are not quite big enough. I would actually just do expand mast area one more time, even by 10. Uh, just like in my previous video, you see how it's kind of incorporating to part of the ball here and, and the part of the ball here. That's okay. Um, again, the AI knows how to adjust and accommodate for that. So we're going to hit run cleaner one more time. Should get a much better result perfect it's awesome see how it, it incorporated the ball blended the areas it's like they never existed at least in these images they didn't okay now a couple other things we can do with this um i want to send this object so it's interesting they actually give you two different i don't know if this is a glitch in mine there's another in paint anything area down here where you can do the same thing we're doing up here so i'm not entirely sure what's going on there I don't know if maybe I had this installed twice at one point. I don't know. But what we're going to do is I'm going to get this image. I'm going to put it up here. Boop, like that. Okay. All I did there is I dragged and dropped it. I love Automatic 11.11 for that. It makes it super easy to move things around. Okay. We're going to run segment anything again. And you'll see those objects disappear here once it gets that mask done. And they're gone. Okay. Let's say we want to uh, change the color of some of these balls. Let's say we want we want uh, a red ball. We got two orange ones. We got a blue one, a purple one. We got a pink one, a green one. Okay. They're all different colors except for these two. Okay. I want this one in the back to be. Let's say let's say we want to make a red. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask the areas that define that ball. Okay. And you can do either one click in each of these. Uh, but if you maintain just in that area, you just basically mask out those little colored areas that define that ball. Okay, run the create mask, and we should only get that as a masked area, just like that. Perfect. We're going to expand that mask just a little bit. Okay, there we go. Okay, now what we have is we want to change it, so we're not going to be using cleaner here. Okay. We actually want to do in painting. And at this point, we want to utilize a positive prompt. We're going to do red rubber ball. Um, I don't think we really need for what we're doing uh, a negative prompt. Okay. Now, they give you a list of, of models that are compatible with this that you can use to do the positive prompting or the changing, the in painting. Uh, I think for this uh, Rev Animated, I think it's going to be great. Rev Animated is actually a wonderful model. I love it. And we select that one. Let's go ahead and run the end painting. Let's see if we get what we're looking for. Okay, so we did get the red ball. It is interesting that it's, it, it's kind of highlighting this outer edge here a little bit. So this iterations thing, I'm a little unfamiliar with. I'm going to give that a test. I want to see what that does. I don't know if it's like iterating, like giving me two different versions of it. I'll bet you that's what it is. Let's try that. And sure enough, yeah, it rendered two different images. Ah, there we go. That's a much better ball. I like that one. Okay. I mean, it's pretty smooth. I mean, it doesn't have a lot of detail. Like some of these others have lines on them. That's okay. Uh, some of them don't. So it's great. 
Um, we did get a little bit of red reflection on the floor there, which is good. Uh, hid behind this toy right here, whatever this toy is. I might just get rid of that one. All right. So those are the simple aspects of this. I mean, you can remove objects, which is great. Just got, like I said, just got to make sure you give it enough mass area to um, to actually give the AI context. Okay. And it looks like I believe they've integrated uh, the ability to create your own masks. Uh, let's see, trim mask by sketch, add mask by sketch. There we go. I forgot about these. So um, when I was working with this before, sometimes when you expand the mask too much or it would uh, mask out all those little black lines, I actually had to go through and uh, clear out those by doing trim mask by sketch. So you can actually customize the masking on it uh, to give it what you want. Again, it's just like any other uh, painting uh, integration, you can erase the current mask. Uh, let's say we want to do this and add mask on that. <laughs> um, this would be interesting. And I want to just uh, run in painting on that again. I want to see what it does. Okay, yeah, <laughs> I'm a little weird. <laughs> I've got demon dog going on here. Anyway, so yeah, because it's, you know, I got a red rubber ball and bit tried to create <laughs> ice as red rubber balls. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm getting a little off subject here. Okay, so as you can see, we have the ability to manipulate all sorts of different objects in here. And this makes it so much easier than, than trying to in-paint manually using the in paint uh, method over here under the uh, image to image tab. Now, don't get me wrong, this has its place, but with the improvements that they've made, uh, yeah, it looks like I have two tabs up here, but it's putting it all under one tab. Um, with the improvements, improvements that they've made, you can do a lot of really cool things with this. I mean, let's say we want to, instead of a puppy here, um, let's say we want to change this into a cat, okay? So let's mask out that, let's mask out all this. Again, I'm just using a line, okay? I'm just using a line to do this. And then we're gonna create the mask. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and change this over to cute kitten. All right, so we are going to expand the mask as well. I wanna give it some context, so let's do expand mask. So we got enough mask around the object that, nah, I'm gonna do it one more time. I want to give the AI the ability to really create something there. So now we're going to come over here. We've got Cute Kitten in there, and I think that's it. Let's go ahead and run in painting. And there we go. We got ourselves a kitten. Now, um, you can change your model here to try to get different results or just do different iterations, obviously, to get a different kitten. But you can see that it integrated it really well. Okay. Um, you're probably by now getting a really good impression on how powerful this actually is. This is an amazing tool uh, to be able to modify and change things. Uh, let's try one of our more comp in the previous video, I tried doing a more complex uh, eraser, so let's dive into that. So what we're going to do, we're going to erase the existing mask. And what we did in the other videos, we got rid of these objects up here. Okay, we're going to see how good the cleaner is with this. Let's go ahead and mask out what we want here. So we're just gonna draw a line all the way down to there, all the way over here. Make sure we hit all these colored areas. Okay. Well, let's check that mask. Let's make sure that it shows what we want to mask out. Okay. And it looks like we need to hit that, that, maybe something up here. What else? Maybe over here a tiny bit. Okay, let's hit that mask one more time. And I think that's fine. What we're going to do is um, we're going to expand it just a little bit. There we go. I think that's good. So what we're going to do is come up here to in painting. Oh, no, let's see if we can do the cleaner. This is going to be interesting. You know, I think what I should have done, honestly, uh, we don't want to get rid of the wall. All we want to get rid of are these things here. So let's just try that and see if see if that is what's going to do it for us here. Let's try that. Create that mask. Again, we're shooting for anything but the wall. All right, we're still getting the wall, which means 
one of our masks is touching the wall. So let's reduce our mask down. Mark that, that, that. We're just clicking dots this time, except for that one. We'll do that. Dot, dot. Let's draw through that one. That one. Okay, let's create that mask. There we go. Okay, so we've got a couple more things here. I think they said you could do S for full screen. There we go. So let's see if we can zero in on some of these areas here. Uh, we are going to reduce that mask down as small as we can get it because we want to mark the black areas here, which are really hard to see. Get those. They're probably not black. You know, they're just a different color. Okay. Now I want to say it was Shift R. Hmm. Oh, where's the instructions when you need it? There was S. There we go. So we got those. Let's check that mask. See if we got it. I think we did. So we're going to expand that mass just a little bit. Looks like we got a couple missing. But you know what? I'm not going to mess with those. Um, in fact, let's expand those. This may mess things up. So now we got everything included. We're going to use the cleaner. Let's run the cleaner. Not bad, it's okay. <laughs> Again, when you're working in bigger areas like this, it can be a little bit, a little more difficult. Let's try LDM, see what it does. Let's give it a second. Some of these may take a little. That one definitely took considerably longer. It was a good few minutes for it to finish up what it was doing and did about the same amount of uh, job on and left some outlines. So I'm not sure I like the LDM. Long works really fast, does a pretty good job. Um, again, when working with larger areas like this, you're going to get some artifacting. So you may want to start little by little. And even instead of using the mask area up here, what you do is you just manually mask everything. You may have to reset the whole interface on this one. Oh no, let's, see, let's get rid of that. Let's trim the mask. Get rid of that. Now let's just go like this. We're just going to get rid of that first. Might be quicker to do it this way um, because then you're just working with that particular mask. So, and it, you know, part of the problem, no, we're not. We're just using the cleaner, so we're not using a positive prompt or anything. But you get the idea. So you can go through and erase specific objects, modify certain objects. This is a powerful tool. Um, under the end painting, you can use positive and negative prompts. You do have access to more of the advanced functionality, like the number of steps and the uh, guidance scale, the seed and everything. So um, definitely play around with this. Uh, this is going to give you um, a lot more capability and be able to execute a lot of those things that you're spending a lot of time using end painting for. Uh, you're going to be able to get them done a lot quicker using the InPaint Anything tool. So uh, tell me what you think. Like and subscribe. Uh, we are really enjoying a lot of the users that uh, get, come onto our Discord channel as well. Give us uh, some feedback and we'll talk to you all later.